Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, bucks, Got things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Uh, Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. (laughs) Man, if y'all only knew, I think I'll tell it to you. Uh, This morning, man, started off real crazy. But it's just those little mishaps where we as people who are striving to be successful Um, That makes all the difference in the world. When you have those little minor things that come up, you can't let the minor things stop you. You've got to keep pressing forward. Now, could I have played the role of where is my car? Where is my car? Oh, where is my car? Instead of hustling and grab a cab. So what am I? Am I above a cab ride now? Or, or or do I have to look at the bigger picture and say, okay, I could act like a little spoiled brat, some type of star, and go, I don't ride in cabs, or where's my car, and then go to blaming people for not having a car, or do I make the adjustments? Because ain't like I ain't been in a cab before now. Slow down. Ain't like I ain't never been in a, in a, in a beat-up car before. Slow down. Ain't ever like I ain't never had a car and rode a bus before. Slow down. Ain't like I ain't never been homeless before and ain't have nowhere to go. Slow down. So in those moments right there, always remember where you come from. But even more importantly, always remember where you're trying to go. Because it's important for me that I get here as many mornings as I possibly can. It's important because that's the goal. And so many people allow a minor things to stop them on their road to success. And I'm giving you this example today. Not to say, hey, look at me, but to say to you, hey, listen to me. There are going to be a lot of things that's going to happen along your way to being successful. And if you allow the small things to stop you, there's no way you'll make it. You've got to always press forward and stop looking at the situation for what it is. And look, sometimes you have to take your eye off of right now and put your eye on the future. You know, God has blessed me in so many ways. I mean, what can I say? You know, I ask God for this syndicated show. He gives me a syndicated show. Now I act like I don't want to come to it. Hold on, man, slow down. Did not you ask for this? Do I not realize that there are certain people, man, who look forward to this message in the morning? I've heard it from people. So from the hundreds that I've heard it for, that could represent thousands for all I know. So if I think somebody's counting on me, I got to try to get there and give something. So today I didn't have any time at all to think about what I might say. I just walked right in and the jingle was playing. 
And so I decided to just tell you about my day. And maybe you can relate it to something you're going through along the way. Because no matter who you are, you're going to have some moments, man, where things are going to happen. And like I always tell my kids, and I just had this conversation with my little girl, it ain't that things ain't going to happen. It's how you handle what happens that matters. But it don't matter. It's how you handle what happens that's the determining factor on where you get in life and how soon you get there and how long you stay there. There will always be a mishap, something that's going to throw you off. There will always be something, man, that could deter you. There will be something somewhere, man, that will make you doubt it. Now that you know that's going to happen, then let's talk about how you handle what happens because it's going to happen. So now what do you do as a person when these moments come about in your life? How do you handle them? Oh, woe is me. Oh, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Well, if the Lord wanted me to have this, I'd have that. Do you know how many times you hear people say that? You know, man, it, it, it really irks me, man. Stop using God as your excuse. God ain't no excuse. God is a reason. He's a reason why the good happens. He's a reason. He's not an excuse. God don't have no excuses in none of his scriptures or writings. Not that I've He just don't make excuses. I would have done this, but, you know, there's a scripture that says the poor will all shall always be amongst us. Why that's got to be you? Yeah, he said the poor will always be amongst us because he know everybody ain't going to follow the principles of success. But he also said he came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He said that too, but oh, no, you don't want to hear that because your life kind of tripping out a little bit. So now what you do with it? Now you twist it and you go to that one little scripture that say, well, the poor shall always be amongst us. Well, that's put in there because that's a, that's a just in case. See, that's a just in case y'all don't want to follow the scriptures. That's just in case you don't understand that faith without works is dead. That's just in case you have not because you ask not. It's just in case you don't believe and shall not doubt. He got all that in there. But in case you don't want to do that, there is a scripture that tells you what will happen if you don't do it. And here it is. The poor shall always be amongst us. But then you get that when they say, well, that's I guess that's the Lord's will. Lord's will, really? Really, really, really. That's amazing. I just don't believe that about him. I don't believe that God created your life to be a life of misery. I think that we make decisions along the way that cause us to have lives of misery. But I really, really just don't believe that God created you for that. I've heard uh, Nelson Mandela speak. And, you know, you got to go, wow, all those years in prison, man. What was it about? When you hear him speak, you understand what it was about. He said he always knew he would be free one day. Now, what he said he never knew was, he said he never knew that he would be the president of that country. Oh, my goodness. What a long way around. But he could have sat there and got involved in prison activities that wasn't up to par and things like that. And they said whenever young inmates used to come in, he was telling the story one time of how young inmates used to come into the prison. They all sit around and talk to him about what they were doing and how many kids they had in their lives. And it helped them keep track of the outside a little bit. And, and it kept a sense of time for them and it reminded them to talk about what they left behind. And it kept them going because something was greater on the other side. Had he allowed that to stop him? Had he allowed the imprisonment, which is a pretty major deal, oh, by the way, then guess what? He would have never been the Nelson Mandela that we know today, a martyr, a leader, a great force. People want to go around him. Even people that imprisoned him could not understand his his staunch strength, his faith, his unwavering commitment. They couldn't understand it. So things are going to happen in your life, but it's how you handle what happens that matter. So keep pushing, y'all. Don't let the little things get in the way, okay? And if you just, sometimes you just don't know. I got in the cab thinking I wasn't going to make it, but at least let's go see. Let's try it. I made it. Now, guess what? That gives me another piece of information that I have. 
And all I, I had to see it again today. Guess what I said today? Man, sometimes when it look like you ain't going to make it, just go ahead on anywhere. Now, I could still be back there at the hotel talking about where my car. But I got up in here, I made it. So now, what y'all going to do with it? Let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I got it for you. I got it for you. If you've been waiting on it, here it is. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Period. Coldest show in the world. You have other choices. You have other things you could do in the morning. The only place you can do this here is right here. This it. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Bet. Shirley Strawberry, <laughs> Carla Pharrell, that girl out of Mississippi called Mississippi Monica. Boy, this boy right here. Kill Spates. Yeah. Learning on the job, Junior. <laughs> And the legend that is nephew Tommy. It is. Well, yeah. Junior, what's on your mind? Yeah. Uh, let me let me just ask you something, Uncle. I know you, you you you've been you for a very long time, sixty five years. You know how you is. Yeah. Do you ever just want to just not be you and just start cussing everybody out? Have you ever just wanted that? What? Well, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Cause wait. I know some Have days I, I ever just wanted just... to just not be me and start cussing somebody out? Yeah. Just not be the celebrity well, Steve see, Harvey. Uh, obviously, you don't really know me. Uh, <laughs> been cussing. He's still uh, apparently I, yeah, not. I, <laughs> it used to be a resolution to stop cussing. <laughs> uh, I remember that day you tried to do it. Yeah, I, I had <laughs> Hit on my day. I've, I've given that up so many times. I don't even apologize for it no more, Julie. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I meant it. <laughs> Didn't I we have a money jar at one time? <laughs> huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a what? money jar for cussing. Now yeah. the jar was filled after the first day. <laughs> I'm just full of twenty. Tried to do it on the air, Steve, and it didn't work. No, oh, man, come on. No, I'm not. I'm not. I've just decided, and that's how I am. Now, if you don't like cussing and everything, and you judgmental about people who cuss, I understand where you're coming from. Don't. You don't have to cuss. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you right now. Me personally. Yeah. I recommend it. Mm. Stress reliever. It's therapeutic. Girl, I, know. I don't have ulcers. I don't have high blood pressure, hypertension. I ain't got none of that stuff, man. I ain't got. I, I ain't. I ain't. I ain't got chronic illnesses. You know, I had. I had none of that, man. I ain't bipolar. You don't have none of that. You know why? Cause yeah. I let it out. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I don't give it time to fester in me. Mm. I'm not sitting around. I'm not bitter. No, yeah. I I ain't, I don't hold grudges, cause the <laughs> moment we have the grudge, I'm gonna get it to you. Mm. That way I ain't got to hold it. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm letting live my yeah. life, and it's it's okay. And after this birthday right here, okay. I'm telling you, man, I'm just more settling who I am. And if you do not like me, it's okay, man. It's okay. Most people I, that I discovered don't like me, I immediately start disliking their ass. And we <laughs> eat. <laughs> we ain't got to do handle this it. no more. Oh, man, ain't no problem. No, oh, that's what we're doing? Cool. Well, we yeah. like you, Steve. We like you yeah. a lot. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Coming up at 32 <laughs> minutes after the hour. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> the nephew is here with Run That Prank Back. We'll get into it right after this. Thank you, baby. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go. Here's a nephew with Run That Prank Back. Nephew, what you got? Start us off. What I got, what I got, what Mm -hmm. I got. My refrigerator. My refrigerator. My refrigerator. (laughs) Not the My Adidas setup. (laughs) Hit us with it. What a little run DMC in there. All right, let's go, cat dog. My refrigerator. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Mr. please. Who is this? Mr. This is Jackson. I'm the driver, man. I'm uh, actually the delivery guy that's bringing you refrigerator over today. Uh, okay, what's going on? Okay, listen, I know we had a window that was from 8 to 12 this morning. It's, mm-hmm. Let's see, it's 11.30 now. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, we're running a little bit behind schedule, man. We had some problems at the yard getting everything uh, loaded up. Oh, man, come on, man. You killing me. I can't. Y'all, so y'all running behind. We're a little bit behind schedule, man. We're gonna have, we, we'll gonna have. we be there somewhere between 12 and 4. 
Oh, come on, man. Y'all got to do better than that now. Man, I'm, I'm with my job. I, I understand, sir. I understand. I, actually, it's... it's I got all, man, I got all my food in here and, and uh, coolers and stuff, man. I got ice everywhere, man. Come on. So, I mean, what's, what's, what's going on? If y'all ain't got the refrigerator, I'm trying to figure no, out. No, no, we loaded up, you know. We just had some problems. I think one of the forklifts went out, and, you know, we it, it kind of pushed us back. So that four-hour window we had from 8 to 12, man, just got ruined, and now we're pushing things from uh, 12 to 4. So between 12 and 4, man, we would definitely be there. Man, y'all got to be better than that. Cool. Uh, I spoke to yesterday. He's actually the uh, warehouse supervisor. He's actually out today. He's not here. Yeah, man, I'm supposed to be at work at 1 o'clock. You said y'all ain't going to be here till in between 12 and 4. I'm supposed to be at work at 1 o'clock. I understand it, man. I, I, I greatly apologize, man. It, 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 this rarely happens, and it just so happened this morning the forklift was down, and we had a lot of stuff to load up. You know, we got right. I got 10 refrigerators on this truck, man, and one of them's definitely yours, sir, so I'm definitely going to be getting it to you as soon as I can. Man, y'all so, so Man, y'all pushing it because I'm supposed to be at work. And then I, I, I done scheduled everything else around this because I'm supposed to, you know, I got to have my refrigerator because I got all my food and stuff sitting in here in, in, in the kitchen and, okay. and, and whatnot. Your, 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 so your, I, your I refrigerator went out? Did it go? Your refrigerator went out? Is that what happened? Yeah, sir. It so did. I mean, I hadn't had it for quite some time. So, you know, so it's just a matter of time for, for it to go out. So I decided okay. to go ahead and get a new one. You know, right. So that's why. I well, now I can schedule. You, I can schedule you next week sometime if you want me to. You you get, no, but, no, uh, no, no, no. I mean, I can't. I can't afford it. I just, we're gonna pay for this food that I got in here all over the floor. Let me let me get the hustler man. See if I can move as quick as I can. But twelve to four is the window, man. I, I like I said, I apologize, Mister. Mm-hmm. But we'll be there, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be there with your refrigerator today, okay? Okay. So so when you when you on your way, how about I want you to call me and let me know that you're on your way. I know what's going on. We don't normally we don't normally call when we're on our way. We just come on in and get things set up. What, you, what do you mean you don't call? Why the f- not? You just called me just now, didn't you? Yeah, you, yeah, you I did. Call me then. Make no sense. Okay, like I said, the problem is on us, man. I will give you a call when we in route. Okay. Mm-hmm, okay, I appreciate that. Now you said twelve. You said between twelve and four. Now. Yeah, yes, sir. Between twelve and four, we definitely be there. We got you on the truck, man. Okay, I'm not, I don't want. I don't want no mess, man. No, no, we got you. We got you. We'll see you in a minute, man. All right. Take care. Mm-hmm. Hello? Uh, Mr. Who is this? This is Jackson again, the delivery guy, man, with the refrigerator. Well, what's, what, yeah. Uh, listen, Mr. Baptiste, man, we run into a few more problems here, man. It looks like oh. we probably not going to get that refrigerator out till tomorrow sometime. You, uh, you said, hold on, you, you said what? We run into a few more problems, man. It looks like we probably not going to get that refrigerator out till tomorrow you sometime. You done ran into a few more problems. A few more problems like what? Sir, we got some problems with some, uh, um... Some more deliveries we got. Uh, just with all the deliveries we got, it just don't seem we're gonna make it on your side of town to be able to get this thing oh, taken. You're not gonna make it on my side of town. What kind of is that? You you just you decide you want to take my money when I pay for the when I pay for. The, but you gonna tell me you don't have, you ain't gonna make it on my side of town? Well, but well, we can definitely get out there tomorrow, man. We definitely can get tomorrow, out there tomorrow. I, I can't. I, you, I can't have my situation out here tomorrow. I got chicken and beef and uh and, and, and brisket and all over here in my throat, and you gonna tell me you can't make it in here till tomorrow? What kind of is that? Huh? Elvin, sir, you, sir, you, 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 you ain't got no answer for me on that. Sir, I understand. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think you understand, I, son. Because these, I, got, I got food and ice sitting in here and coolers and all over my floor in my kitchen. You going to tell me that I did, you can't make it in here till tomorrow with my, with my, uh, with my refrigerator because, because you, 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 you all in on the back around. Now, where is no. I told the yesterday. Now, where is that? Where is I know you spoke to Larry. Like, I told him yesterday I had to have my at work at 1 o'clock. I told him that. I said that you gotta okay. have that refrigerator here on time because I gotta have my at work. Well, like I said, we've had some setbacks. So where is I don't talk to you no more. Where is like, like I said, sir, not working today. He's, he's not. not he's not in today. He, so he's, he's so not, who in charge? Well, actually, the lady named one that's actually in charge. And when Larry leaves, but uh, I don't even know if I saw him on. Oh, but but you raggedy. You what are y'all doing over there? Now what I spoke. We're going to have it there. It was between and 8 I, and 12. I, I, I done took off my job, but y'all had a refrigerator here. I'm here at home. I, I, and now you call me back. And you sir, all I can me. tell you is we're going to be there tomorrow, okay? I'm not going to go back and forth. You, you say you're not going to go back. I'm not no, gonna... you, know, you, you know what? You and that refrigerator. Sorry, y'all. You take that refrigerator. So you take that refrigerator up your up and up. I don't want to. No more. I can go around and put this food in my neighbor's refrigerator, and I'm gonna go get me another from somewhere else. Cause you 
playing around. I ain't got time for your mess. Sir, I don't know if I I don't know if that's refundable. You don't know if you it's know what refundable. I mean? What the f- you mean you don't know if it's refundable? You got time? You gonna take my money and you gonna tell me that I can't have my money back and you you can't get my refrigerator on here on time? Sir, sir, uh, uh, listen. There's one more thing I, I need to talk, you tell you. Okay, but I have one more thing I need to tell you, okay? Are you listening? What? This will probably help everything. What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife. You know what? I'm going to fix her. So, but where they have my refrigerator? That's what I want to know. I tell you what, they showed up their refrigerator. I showed up so they where they can put it. <laughs> Don't you hate it when they call and they got that window and they change that window? So you can't do anything between those hours because if you leave, you know you're going to miss it. All right. Right. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, well, The View has suspended our girl Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks. What? What? For comments she made about the Holocaust, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. Plus, in other Jesus. entertainment news, yeah, Snoop's dog dog was missing. Snoop Snoop's dog was missing. He's back now, though. The and dog finally, was looking for the dog. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> roof, roof. And finally, in trending food news, get your coins together. The big game food prices are soaring. Okay, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it's time. For the chief love officer to step in for your love questions, Aaron in Bossier City says, I'm a 33-year-old single woman and I have a crush on my dad's friend and he likes me too. The guy is 55 years old, same age as my dad. My mother and father don't speak at all, so when I asked my mom for advice, she told me to go for it so it would give my father a heart attack. I don't want to upset my dad. Should I ask for my dad's blessing or should his friend ask him? Wow, she's going forward with this. Well, let me explain something to you. His friend, that's going to be a hell of a conversation. That's going to be a hell of a conversation, man. I, I don't. I have no idea how you go to your friend and say, hey, man, look, I care about your daughter. Oh, thanks, friend. No, no, I care about her. And uh, I want to start dating your daughter. You know, we might could work through this, but it will be after this ass whooping, though. <laughs> That's A and B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might could work through it, but we're going to fuck up. Because you my boy, and you've been looking at my daughter like that. Like, that's a hard one. Yeah. yeah. That's a hard one. going to happen immediately, though. That's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And I'm talking about, man, like, what? Yeah. They're all up in my face just so you can be up in her face. It's too, it's too much... Especially it, old black dudes. I'm just telling you, man, we don't. Old white dudes. I don't. I just don't know men that's going to do that one real well. Hey, I wish you well. Go for it. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. 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 All right. Uh, moving on to, Air, uh, to uh, Kennedy in Evanston. Kennedy writes, I'm 29, and I've had an on and off again relationship with a great guy. It's my fault that we always break up because I have a lot of male friends. And it's hard for me to push them aside because I'm in a relationship. I vibe better with males than I do females. Uh, what is this? Why, why does this bother my man so much? Why? Because he know what your male friends want. The same thing he want. He know what your male friends would do if given the opportunity because it's the same thing he did. He know you ain't just attractive to him. That's why it bothers him. And I have told y'all over and over, this don't work. But y'all don't believe, Uncle Steve. So go on, do like you want to. Have all the male friends you want, and you ain't finna have no man. Now, you got it? Because your man is not gonna tolerate or understand all the male friends. First of all, you talking to them when you could be talking to me. You're on the phone laughing, kikiing, and all this here with them, but you don't know, you ain't over here laughing and kikiing with me. And I know why they laughing and kikiing. Because they'll do you if given the opportunity. And if you keep playing with them, they're going to do you. Now, going to tell you this no damn more. Hey, man, matter of fact, let's just say this. Quit writing me. 
if you're in a relationship committed and your relationship is struggling because of your same sex friends, your opposite sex friends, don't write us no damn more about this because I'm tired of telling y'all what I've been telling you for years and all these little new ass people. He old fashioned. You can have a male friend. All right, go ahead, get you one. I tell you what, but he better not want you though. Because you're going to hear about it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you heard Thank it from you. a CLO. <laughs> Nikki in Oak Cliff, as we Who? move on, says, my mother Who? and I fell out. My Nikki. mother and I. Nikki. Nikki. Oh, I wasn't. I didn't Oak Cliff. He thought Cliff. you said <laughs> in Oak Cliff. <laughs> Man, I, I said, said in word in Oak Cliff. I, said, I thought you said in word in Oak Cliff. I went, okay. I was at all your right. voice, I mean, at your face. I was like, Whoa. all right, oh, Nikki, 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 Nikki mm, in okay. Oak Cliff, okay? <laughs> my I've, Nikki I've, in I've Oak said, Cliff. I've said it like that, too. <laughs> Says, my mother and I fell out because she owes me money uh, for a vacation we took over the holidays. She wanted to go visit her sister, so I bought our plane tickets. She has money, but she's always saving for a rainy day. Well, it's raining on my end, and I need my money. She said it's the least I can do for her after all she's done for me. I'm so irritated. Should I count this as a total loss? Come on. Well, you can lose the money or lose the relationship with your mother. Is it really that big a deal? Now, your mother saves money for a rainy day. Do you know who she's saving the money for? For whose rainy day? For her rainy day. Now, you having a rainy day. But now you're going to fall out with your mama over an airplane ticket. Oh, do you understand something? My mama done slapped me dead in my mouth. I'm talking about 19 years old. Haul off slapped me dead in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Do you know I was over there the next day eating? Come on. Because <laughs> my daddy said, you know, we're having dinner over here at the house tomorrow. I can't tell my father I'm mad at my mama. You know how hard my mama didn't hit me before? Yeah. Man, I, mm-hmm. girl, please. I didn't woke up and white folks were standing over me. I'm trying to tell you. I was, <laughs> yeah. But why were they there? Huh? Why, why did you, what happened? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not understanding. I don't understand. We woke up at the doctor. What is you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. White folks. Oh, with that's smelling that's smelling that's smelling you was unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> See, white folks standing over me. Week, woke up, white woke folks up, standing woke up looking at machinery. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on to Georgia in Columbia. Georgia says, uh, I've got a problem with the man I'm seeing on the side because he's always buying me expensive gifts and I don't have anywhere to keep stashing gifts. Jewelry, shoes, and clothes are his thing. And my husband knows I don't make that kind of money. Is it rude to ask my side dude for cash instead? (laughs) Not, Not leave him alone. Yeah. Now don't <laughs> That's now help not the option. situation. <laughs> wow. Not the issue. Lady. <laughs> you have a husband and a man on the side. And part of the reason why you still deal with this man on the side is not only because of what he do to you, it's also because of what he do for you. So now, no, I'm not gonna help you. No, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to offend him if you ask for just cash. If you ask him for cash, All right. Thank you, he CLO. don't see we the return go. on his investment. It's Coming up saying. at the top R-O-I. of the hour, mm-hmm. we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. ABC has suspended Whoopi Goldberg from The View for two weeks. After uh, saying, she said that the Holocaust was not about race. Now, this is in a statement. ABC News uh, President Kim Goodwin said, effective immediately, I'm suspending Whoopi for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments. While Whoopi apologized, um, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. The entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends, family, and communities. Whoopi made the comments on Monday's episode of The View uh, during a discussion of a Tennessee school board's ban of Mouth, a uh, nonfiction graphic novel about cartoonist Art Spiegelman's father's uh, experience surviving the Holocaust. Let's be truthful, uh, Whoopi said. Let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. 
It's not about race. It's about man's inhumanity to man. The comment was condemned by such Jewish organizations as the Anti-Defamation League and the U.S. Holocaust Museum. See, so, I th- yeah, I think what Whoopi was trying to say but did it the wrong way because when you don't understand the actual way that people feel about it, the Holocaust was definitely against a humanity against man. That definitely was. Whoopi yeah, Goldberg was using the terms in terms of race in like black, white, Asian. She was probably trying to say it that way, that it wasn't about you being an Asian or an African or a, or a Native American. And I think that's what she was trying to say. The problem with this statement is, and I love Whoopi Goldberg, man. She's always been a stellar person to me. And I've never heard her say it just, and that's why she would apologize, because I think she was saying it wasn't about race in terms of how you can look at a person and know their race. You know, because you got. Like you look at us and know we're black. Right. But you got race, creed, religion. And uh, that's probably where she meant it. But, you know, and I I think, uh, you know, that's why it's just a suspension. Because I think that's what she was trying to say. I don't know it either way, one way or the other. I'm just based on what you just told me right here. But knowing the Whoopi Goldberg that I know, Mm -hmm. she gets it. She gets it. Because her and I have had conversations because I do not understand any rift uh, between blacks and Jews. I just don't understand any rift there because if any two people should understand anybody, right. yeah, I would think those two groups. That's why I don't. I wouldn't get a rift between uh, African Americans and Native Americans. Yeah, Whoopi mm-hmm. said what she should have said, um, Steve, this is what Whoopi said. I should have said it is about both. The Jewish people around the world have always had my support, and that will never waver. I'm sorry for the hurt I've caused. So she said yeah. it should have been about oh. man's inhumanity to man and race. She said she, she it should have yeah. been about both, but she did not say that. Yeah. So, but it was, know, it was, it was, I mean, seriously, it was one of the most inhumane things. Those two things, the Holocaust and slavery, (laughs) Jesus. Go to both of those museums in in Washington, D.C. Go to Mm -hmm. both of those, Mm -hmm. and you are devastated. I'm telling you, Tommy, those were two of the greatest atrocities Mm -hmm. against a people. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 But I've got to tell you something else, too, though, man. Uh, And this is crazy because Shirley turned me on to the uh, series Yellowstone. She's been telling me to watch Yellowstone. I finished all four seasons. You did? You finished really? Already? Yeah. You just really? started. Because yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. good, you can't stop. Yeah. That's, That's all so I do. I don't watch it. Ain't no sports on TV yet. You know, Super Bowl ain't here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I watch the games and I go back to Yellowstone. I don't like basketball season until after the All-Star game. Right. So, you know, I got time. Yellowstone, what they did to Native Americans, hmm. this. Mm-hmm. I, I, listen to me, man. And I, I put that up there because I wasn't never thinking about it. But the atrocity against Africans, against Jews, and against Native Americans, oh, my God. What they did to Native Americans, man, it was un thinkable what they've done and what they continue to do. But what they continue to do to black people is unthinkable too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've never yes, seen sir. it, man. This country has done so many things to people. What did the guy say on Yellowstone? He said, what is fair? The little boy on Yellowstone in the final episode, he said, but that's not fair because he was telling him what happened to the uh, Native Americans. Mm-hmm. He said, what happened was he said, he said, why are there not any more buffalo? He said, because they wanted to kill the buffalo. And so Kevin Costner, he said, the little boy said, why did they want to kill the buffalo? And he stopped and he said, here's the truth. Because the Indians lived on the buffalo. They followed the buffalo. The buffalo was their lifeblood. 
if they got rid of the buffalo, they would get rid of the Indian. So they, they they would just send troops out to just kill buffalo, just kill them, 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 so that the Indians wouldn't have a lifeblood. I, I'm sitting here going, listen to this. The little boy said, that's not fair. He said, you know what fair is? When a person does something to you, and then you can't do nothing about it, and you have to just accept it. He said, that's what fair is. I went, I'll be damned. Hmm. And that's America's definition of fair. That's right. Hmm. That's right. <laughs> All right, Steve. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, bomb threats at HBCUs. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are in Black History Month, and uh, you got to ask the question, what's going on? A growing number of historically black colleges and universities have had to lock down or postpone classes due to bomb threats. At least 13 HBCUs have reported bomb threats. It is scary. It is horrifying. According to USA Today, there are calls for federal law enforcement to investigate. Homeland Security is providing President Biden with updates. Um, I mean, this country with these constant racially violent threats is just unbelievable everywhere you go. Our our children can't go to school. They can't go to their universities without being terrorized. And again, this is just the beginning of Black History Month 2022. Where did this come from? (laughs) It's it's the country we live in. Mm -hmm. It's the United States of America. I mean, look. I was watching something online the other day. I don't think it was on DL site or somebody's site. There was a white guy on there ranting and raving that white people are the most discriminated against group of people in the world. And that was his claim. That was his rant. The moment something happens to them, it's a catastrophe. But stuff can happen to other people repeatedly over and over and over and nothing being said. If they get a moment, not all, but if there are some whites who if they get a moment to point out a single incident that they can say is discrimination, oh, here it comes. It's a national atrocity, affirmative action where they started saying you had to hire a certain amount of black people. I've been on a job interview where a guy told me, oh, when as soon as I sat down, he said, I'm just, I said, yeah, I'm here for the job interview. He said, "Uh, we filled our quota already. We don't have to hire any more blacks. He told me that. Wow. In the 70s, he told me that. I got him walk my ass right up out of there. We don't have to hire. He didn't want to hear how I was best for the job. I'm telling you right here, we have to, we've dealt with church bombings. They come into our place of religion. They're at our schools bombing right now. They got the Willie Lynch letter after slavery. They found a way now where if a black person can't show employment, they get imprisoned right after slavery. So now they can put you in these concentration camps and get free labor out of you anyway. We didn't even pass the Voters Rights Act this year. Happy yeah. Black History Month. Man, miss me. All right. Uh, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to switch gears and go to Steve's voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now to check Steve's voicemail. And if you would like to leave Steve a voicemail, call 877-29-STEVE, and you could hear your message on the radio. All right, Steve, here we go. This is a call about men in the relationship. Hi, Steve. My name is Nikayla Williams. I'm 23 years old, calling in from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm listening to your guys' conversation right now about men and closure, and it's not usually the woman, it's the man. And I'm literally going through this, like, right now, like, where a guy came into my life with somebody who I knew from high school, trusted him, and out of nowhere, he's just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I want to go back to the point of, did you know that I was, quote unquote, too much when you came into my life? Because, mind you, a lot of times men will set up this facade of willing to be attentive and willing to be supportive and listening. And then once that woman starts exercising that support, 
now it's too much. Now you can't uphold it. It's like, why are you showering me in candy, talking to me all sweet, and then you, you swear you don't want a relationship? Just make it make sense. That's all. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a blessed, glorious day. Wow, very well said, young lady. Here, let me help you with this part right here. You got to understand, when you enter into a relationship with a man, for the first two weeks, you are going to meet the most attentive, best representative of himself you could possibly meet. Uh, Most dudes have got the two-week game mastered, what to say, how to be, because you can... As you use the word facade, you can keep up a facade for two weeks. Two weeks. It's two weeks is really good. It's hard to do that over a 90-day stretch. No. It really is hard to pull that off over a 90-day stretch. It's been done, but it's harder. And so to protect yourselves, women, before you give in to this, oh, my God, this is too good to be true, you have to develop the questions and the tests to find out early if it is too good to be true. And that's why I created the 90-day rule. All right, Stephen, we have another call from a woman about men being the provider. I just heard you say, Steve, I got the tail end, that women want security. When a man meets a woman, it's game on. Uh, I'm really sick of women who look for security in a man. The word says, God bless a child who has their own. No, that's not in the word. But the saying goes, God bless the child that has his or her own. And also the word does say, uh, if a man wants to eat, he has to work. If a man don't work, he don't eat. That goes for one man also. I've never looked for a man to be my security. God has been my source. I just retired from my job after 42 years. God has blessed me to take care of myself. I'm so sick and tired of women who look to a man to take care of her. What I want from a man is loyalty, love, understanding, communication. I want to believe that I can believe in him because I want to. I don't get with a man because of what he can do for me. Never have, never will. Never will. I love the black man. I love you, Steve Harvey. Happy belated birthday. Hello to all of your crew. Stay safe. Be blessed. Bye-bye. You know what? She made some valid points, but I want to show her something. I stand by what I said. What a woman looks for, she's not arguing that point. She's talking about her standpoint. What a woman looks for in a man is security. But the things you describe that you want are forms of security. Loyalty is security. You want to know that your heart is safe with him. You want love. You want to feel like you belong to somebody, like like you're somebody, somebody. You want a person that can communicate with you. That's security. You want understanding. You want to believe in him. That's security system. And then you need to package that up with when your chips is down, will he be there? See, you, you, you y'all, please stop that. Everybody looking for security. Now, I appreciate you. Your source is God, and you've been on your own for 42 years. You ain't, But you said in the whole thing you wanted a man. That's what security is, baby. That's what it is. Women want security. And security is a lot of things. And financial is one of them. And right, financial is one of them. Yeah, if you want to leave a voicemail for Steve, call 877-29-STEVE. You might hear your message on the air. Coming up next, a prank phone call with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, caught on camera. Caught mm. on camera. Mm-mm. We'll get into that mm -hmm, in just a little bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Okay. Well, what you want? How you want? (laughs) Well, we know it's going to be stupid, so what else? Okay, got that. How do you you want it? How does it feel? (laughs) Coming up as a... I'm sorry. The book of Tupac? Uh The book of Tupac. (laughs) Living in the fast lane, I'm for real, all right? (laughs) We're going to turn to the book of ignorance. Verse 5 reads, your baby got my baby's name. That is the book of ignorance. Chapter 5, verse 4, Junior, it says, your baby got my baby's name. Amen. All right. Stay with me if you would, cat dog. We're going to run that. Thank you. Amen. 
Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, uh, Patricia. Patricia. Speaking. Who is this? How you doing? Listen, um, my name is Floyd. Floyd. I want to give you a call. Your your daughter, she attends middle school, right? I'm sorry, what's your name again? Floyd. Floyd. Uh huh. Okay, what can I do for you? Uh, well, like I said, your 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 daughter, she go she do go to middle school, right? Yeah. Okay. Now her name her name is Derricka. Why you need to know that? Okay. Well, is something wrong or something? No, no, uh, no, no, nothing wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to alarm you or nothing like that, but okay, let me see. Okay, so what you calling me for? Well, here's here's the situation. My daughter actually goes to middle school along along with with your daughter. Okay. And and it's it's a bit of a problem that 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 has arisen that me and my wife just found out about. Okay. What they having some uh, issues, Derek and your baby in 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 some kind of. Like trouble or something? No, 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 no nothing like that. But well, my see, baby don't my... fool with nobody at that school. She don't mess with nobody. She on the honor roll and everything. I don't have no problems out of Derrica. Right. Like right. none. Okay. So I'm okay. just no, trying no, to no, figure out why you're calling me. Let, let me. No, let me tell you, Miss Patricia, what the problem is. See, my daughter' name is Derrica. Okay. So, and, and, and it just blew me and my wife away that it was another Derrica that went to school. Okay, all and, right. And, I don't and, know too many Derricks. That's a unique name. That's cute. Okay. Right, right. Well, here's the problem. Me and my wife actually, you know, when it was time to name our child, we thought we was really picking a name that nobody uh, would e ever pick out for their daughter. And to have another Derrick in the school, that blew us away. And I, I guess the real reason why I'm trying to call you, Miss Patricia, is see if, if, uh, if there's something maybe we can work out. You know, maybe... Uh uh, like your Derricka, does wait, she have a, 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 wait, a wait, middle wait, name wait, wait. or a nickname she can be called by, in opposed to both of them being Derricka? You wait, know, because we really wait. wanted our child to be the only one with this name. Okay, wait, 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 wait the f up. Now you calling me and you asking me to change my baby's name? Well, I mean, you you, you ain't really got to legally change. It. I mean, but just start calling her something else, you know? No, no, wait a minute. So what? You the f naming police or something? Do you know how many? Anne's and Lewis's and Patricia's out there. What if I ask every in in the United States to change their name from Patricia? You know how crazy that is. And I understand that. You must be on drugs. No, what I'm trying to say is, you know, this, this is something that we really have for our baby girl was this name, and we didn't want nobody else to have this. So I, does your Derricka have a middle name she can use? Uh, no, we gonna call her Derricka like we've been calling. You name your. Baby Dee Dee, let's call your baby Dee Dee then. You change y'all, y'all change y'all baby name at the school. I'm not calling, I'm not calling my call baby no Dee Dee. I don't give a f what you call it, but I'm not changing my baby name. Hey, listen, okay, look, I I'm trying to call you and handle this like adults, you know, but you seem to see you're going to push my button and take me to another level. Obviously, you ain't calling me trying to handle no f It doesn't ask me to change my baby name. Call my baby something else at the school because y'all want y'all baby name to be Derek and the only Derek in the school. Hey, you know how many other kids at the damn school got the same name? I understand that, but for my baby girl, it ain't supposed to be like that. Huh? Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your baby girl and your wife. But, you know, I'm not changing my baby damn name. Y'all call y'all baby D. No, what I'm trying to do is get it rectified that we can call. So, how in the f you get my phone number? I know that school ain't gave you my number. I, I got your number. Don't worry about yeah. how I got it. The problem is that what we're talking about right now is can we, what can we start calling your child? I don't give a I know that school ain't called you no, and gave you my listen, damn number. L listen, ma'am, all I'm trying to do is figure out what can we start calling your daughter. Uh, don't cut like she been being called. You and your wife, y'all need to go down to the final statistics office and get your baby name or conjure up some other kind of name for her. But my baby goes keep the same damn name. Let me explain something to you. I've been trying to be calm with you. You done lost your well, mind. if you don't find something else to call her, I'm going to get all I the other kids to my damn number. How you get my number? Don't worry about how I got the number. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. If you don't find another name, I'm going to start getting the kids to call your daughter something else. You get them to call my baby something else. I promise you I'm whipping everybody's who called my baby something else? You're gonna have to change your baby name. I want my baby the name to be Derrick. Joe, Joe, come up in here. This is. Excuse me. My princess is supposed to be the only one named Derrick. 
How did you and call your baby something else at the school? I'm going to have these kids starting tomorrow at school calling your daughter I'm something not, else. I'm not staying on this phone with you like this number. Get, hang up off my phone and don't call my I got, daughter. Let me tell you something. I got one more thing I need to say to you. You listen to me? What? Are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend. <laughs> Get her. Wait, oh, that's the, oh, y'all, my favorite one. Yo, come here, they got, they didn't prank me on this phone. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's so funny. You all right, baby? I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get her. Your Ooh, girlfriend I'm gonna get her. Ooh, I'm gonna got get her. you, baby. Oh, that is so, oh, I am so sorry. Oh, but you got my nerves bad this morning. Lord have mercy. Lord, I got to catch my breath. I got one more thing I got to ask you, darling. What is, what is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. I listen to y'all every morning. Y'all so <laughs> crazy. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all got my blood pressure up this morning. I love y'all. I listen to y'all show every morning. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They find the Lord at the end, don't they? Lord that was ignorant. Oh, Lord. That was ignorant. Lord Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Lord, y'all got my no pressure up. Yeah. Derrica, <laughs> we been calling him. <laughs> I want my baby that. to be the only Derrica in the school. You understand that? <laughs> Call your baby something else. <laughs> Dee Dee. Jeff, come in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Crazy. Now I wish that Jeff would have came in. I'd have lit it. I'd have lit Jeff butt up if he'd have came oh. in. Oh, <laughs> part two, huh? Come on in here, Jeff, and get some of this. I got yeah. your wife going through. Come on, come on, Jeff, come on. Come on, Huntsville, February what? 10, 11, 12, The nephew coming to town. What? Stand up live comedy club. Stand up live comedy club. Huntsville, Alabama, February 10, 11, 12. I will be there, okay? Tickets on sale right now. Stupid is on the way. Just as, just as stupid as this prank was, multiply that by 20. That's what you're going to get out your boy, okay? I promise you. Coming in there to act a doggone fool. Star-nated fool. That's what my daddy used to say. A star-nated fool. I don't know what that meant. I still don't know what that meant. Just acting a star-nated fool down there at that school. That's what you did today. That's what I'm going to do in Huntsville. I'm going to act a star-nated fool. <sighs> Five shows, two on, two, one on Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. Back on the plane on Sunday, Super Bowl, Super Game, or whatever you want to call it, Sunday night. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Everybody come. Is, is everybody comfortable with my stupid? That's all I want to know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I am. Long as long as you too. keep it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> long as you claim it and love keep love it. I know right. don't nobody on this show want none. I know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter. Subjects caught on camera. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you just never know because it could be your letter today. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Subject caught on camera. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 42-year-old married woman, but I've separated from my husband. I've been married four years, and I was in a long-distance marriage because my husband works almost three hours away. He was offered a job that he couldn't refuse, so I told him to take it. With him being out of town during the week, I got a home security system installed with four cameras. I put one camera in the basement and one in the main living area, one at the back door and one at the front door. I put the alarm app on my phone so I could watch the cameras while I was at work. On a Tuesday about a month ago, I was at work and I got an alert that the alarm was going off. Then it was reset. It sent chills up my spine because I was the only one in town and the only person that could have reset my alarm. I looked at the cameras and I saw my husband in our basement and a woman was with him. The woman sat down as my husband went upstairs. 
He came back minutes later with his garment bag. Then he kissed the woman and they walked out the basement door. I called him and he lied and said he was at work and about to go to lunch and he would call me back. I told him to quit lying because I know he's in town and he had a woman in our house. I asked him why he didn't tell me he was in town and why he would bring a woman into my house. He hung up on me. That night he called and said he had a business event to attend, so he needed his tux and he used the basement door out of respect for me. So the woman wouldn't be all over our home. He said he was going to take some time away from me to work on himself. It has been almost a month since he's reached out to me. So I filed for a legal separation. Still no word from him. Is my marriage over? Yes, I'm sorry, but it is. It's over. I mean, he was caught red handed on tape, period. Everything you saw on that camera was true and real, no matter what lies he thought of later and told you. Uh, he had a dinner to go to, so he needed a, a tux. He, ne- he had a business event to attend, so he needed a tux. And he didn't want the woman all over your house. Lies, 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 lies. It's evidenced clearly in his behavior that you saw on tape, not what he says. So don't let him play you. Do not be fooled. He came back to town, he didn't tell you, brought another woman to your house, kissed her in your house, and then they left out together. You're his wife. He completely disrespected you. He betrayed your trust. I mean, I'm sorry you had to see this and that you had to go through this. He's wrong. You did a good thing by filing for a separation. I say just go on and finish up the deal. File for a divorce. He was hardly ever there anyway, and he's not coming back. You haven't heard from him for a month. So I say get out now. Steve, I, I I really don't understand this letter. I, I'm I'm sorry. I don't caught on camera. So what, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> what what what's the letter for? It starts off with obvious stuff in it to me. Steve and Shirley, I'm a 42 year old married woman, but I'm separated from my husband. Now, curiously, in this letter, she never said why she was separated from her husband, but. I'm separated from my husband. We all know what that means. And then she says, I've been married four years. It was a, a, and, and I was in, I was. So this separation is what they've decided. I was in a long distance marriage because my husband works almost three hours away and he was offered a job he couldn't refuse, so I told him to take it. Now with him being out of town during the week, this woman to put a camera system in the house. In the basement, the front door, the back door, and all this here. And now while you was at work on Tuesday, about a month ago, she was and got an alert on the alarm was going off. Then it was reset. Now she said it sent chills up her spine because I was the only one in town and the only person that could have reset my alarm. Well, you're not the only person that could reset the alarm because it got reset. I looked at the cameras and I saw my husband in our basement and a woman was with him. The woman sat down as my husband went upstairs. He came back minutes later with his garment bag. Then he kissed the woman and they walked out the basement door. I called him and he lied and said he was at work and about to go to lunch and he would call me back. That was the lie he told. That was the only lie he told in his letter, Shirley, because I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to surprise you, Shirley. I told him to quit lying because I know he was in town. He had a woman in our house, and I asked him why he didn't tell me he was in town and why he would bring a woman into the house. He hung up on me. That night he called me and said he had a business event to attend, so he needed his tux, and he used the basement door out of respect for me so the woman wouldn't be all over the house. He said he was going to take some time away from me to work on himself. It's been almost a month since he's reached out to me, so I filed for divorce. Still no word from him. Is my marriage over. She filed for legal separation. Yeah, she filed for legal separation. Yeah, that's why she separated. Shirley, you were saying that he lied about coming home with the tux and all like this right here. Yeah. Well, he was on camera. He never denied that after he found out he was on camera. <laughs> he but lied. the reason he oh. came in the house could have very well been true to get the tuxedo. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, that's I'm really why. Because all they did was no, kiss sir. and go out the door. It could have been a tuxedo. It could have been a business meeting. 
He told her the truth. The problem is the truth was enough. Yeah, the fact oh that he didn't God. even tell her he was in town. Oh, I got more when we come back. Okay. All right. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject of today's strawberry letter, caught on camera. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is caught on camera. Caught on camera says it all. This woman put all these cameras in her house. Her and her husband are currently separated. She gets an alert on her phone that says the candle alarm has been reset. Well, she thinking her husband out of town, but he's in town. She look on the cameras. He in the basement with a woman. She calls him. He kisses her, walks out with a gun. Back. He calls her and asks where he at. He say he at work finna go to lunch. <laughs> He lied. Lie. <laughs> he lied. Yeah. So she called him up and said, no, you wasn't. I saw you in the house with this woman and you kissed her. Click. He hung up. He <laughs> hung up because he was off balance because he guilty. needed to regroup. He so guilty. he's busted. Yes. yes. So now he calls back that night and said, all right, here the deal. I was in town. I had a business meeting to go to, so I needed to come home and get my tuxedo. And out of respect for you, I didn't want this woman all over the house, so I came through the basement door. That's the truth. Because he wasn't denying that there wasn't a woman at the house. He wasn't denying he didn't pick something up. He only left with a garment bag. That was probably the tuxedo, and it was probably a business meeting. He did not lie to her. The problem is the truth You should believe the truth. That what you saw. You saw it. Shirley's right. This marriage is over. Is my marriage over? And you haven't heard from him in a month. Mm -hmm. But I bet she has. Oh, yeah. The woman he kissed in her house. (laughs) Yeah. Hell yeah. He's wrong. Dead wrong. It's not her fault in any way. Mm -hmm. But now that you know the truth, what you going to do? It's time to move on. Is my marriage over? Yes, it's over. So let me show you something. This has nothing to do with the letter. Shirley or Carl or anybody, ask me a question, and I'm going to show you how to lie. The sheer lying capability watch how quick he is watch 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 the quickness and creativity okay shirley you and i are in a relationship Uh ask me anything and i'm not gonna tell you the truth what's that i don't care how simple or anything it is go ahead what's that on your head Are are you growing your hair back what is that no that's a patch right there i had that put on i was trying on a hair piece and I left some glue on it, and that's the glue from that has from glue. Quick. Where? How does it come so natural to it's you? So, it's, so it's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. <laughs> this is yeah. unbelievable. Next question. We're in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you drive your car to work today? No, I, I drove it part of the way. <laughs> and then <laughs> I dropped it off at the Jiffy Lube. And then, and, uh, and then and I took to a uh, I took a Uber on in to work, oh. and, uh, oh. and I just go back around there and get it from Jiffy Lube. Are you Are you planning on working out today? I'd love to work out with you. Oh uh, no, I ain't gonna be able to work out today because I tweaked my back. Because when I was leaving the Jiffy <laughs> Jiffy Lube, I slipped in some oil. <laughs> and then you got into the Uber. Tied in, in, boy. Tied in. Yeah. Tied all then in. The story making the, sense. That's what happened, and that's, you know. And it's so you know. unnecessary. You will lie when the truth will do. No, what, 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 why not? <laughs> but why can't you just tell the truth? Because you have to practice this you in case you really need it. Oh, we can handle the truth. You can't oh, no, you handle can't. the way we handle uh-huh. the truth. Oh, no, you that's can't. That's what it is. You can't handle our reaction to your truth. Yeah. You're a lie. Couldn't read it. <laughs> can I ask yeah, a question? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Go oh, here, call it. Who is that on the camera with you? <laughs> I'm who is that on? The, who is that on the camera with me? You, yeah, I'm talking to you. Who is that on the camera with you? Uh-huh. Baby, what camera? <laughs> the camera that I'm looking at. Who is that on the camera with you? Right there. 
Who wait a minute. That? Hold on, wait, wait. Where do you think I am? <laughs> Shirley, any more questions? We're in a committed <laughs> relationship. You can ask me anything. Tell me. What is the point of lying, though? I don't. Why is it so important to you? But but, but, but wait a minute. But, but, but wait a minute, though. Let me ask you something. Why I got to lie? <laughs> ask yourself that. <laughs> no, I am. Because you why? lie. I know why you lie. To distract. To why I got to, to lie, though? Reaction. Well, but see right there. Yeah. Why see don't how you, you tell are? the truth? Okay, you see don't, how you don't are? Don't try to flip it. Don't try to flip it. If you're going to accuse me of doing and something. And I am. And I am. Mm. Yes. Oh, next and I'm right, not doing it. Mm-hmm. And you're going to accuse me eyes. anyway? I, I can you, see. You got eyes where? <laughs> In the back of your head? <laughs> All right. Listen, post your Man, comments on see, today's I can't, Strawberry I'm a, I'm a, Hey, hey I'm going to spend some time with myself. And you need to. <laughs> 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 Here the divorce papers. Uh, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? First of all, can we just say congratulations to Miss Angela Rye? She oh, is yeah. joining ESPN as a special correspondent. Dealing with sports-related issues of race and culture and social justice issues. Congratulations, Angela. Come on, Queen. I think, I think that is beautiful, Angela. girl. Another black woman. Yes. I, come on now. I really yes. do. And I'm pro- trying to tell you, Angela, I have a crush on you, so I will be watching. I know that. I will. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just, just one of my crushes got another job. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see her now. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's are, you, are, you been, are you familiar so with Angela brilliant. Ryan? Uh, no, I'm not. Wow. But I'm familiar with uh, talking about crushes out loud on the radio. Okay. Oh, I do it well, all the time. It's just a crush. I can't. I mean, she don't yeah. want me. Yeah, she yeah, want me. yeah, but hold up, though. But did you hear Tommy say he do it all the time? Uh-huh. Yeah. Totally. See how that sounds? <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. Yeah, you know, I guess. You know, you want to start practicing some habits <laughs> that you can get good at. <laughs> yeah, just start practicing, dog, just yes, in yeah. case. Yeah, no, I got you. Uh, I got you, man. You're also, listening to man, this fool, right? Yeah, I say it all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He just let that go. That ain't what he did. Yeah, he let didn't even think about right that. No, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't think about it at all. Uh, also, let me ask you this, Unc, man. Uh, Super Bowl ten days away, man. What is you gonna be doing for the Super Bowl? What kind of party you have? Like, how do you have your Super Bowl party set up? Well, I don't, have, I don't have a lot of friends, but I have on my house. So I, you know, I'm gonna have something at the house. I invite, you know. Probably have my sons come over, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, now, are you barbecuing I'm, for your own Super Bowl party? Do you do uh-uh, it? He no, got he got the equipment for it. I now. know. He I got it. That. Now, if it was nice that. outside, that would be slick. Super uh-huh. Bowl party outside with the TVs and cookout. Yeah. But I don't know kitchen? how the weather going to be. Uh, the 13th. February. The 13th. 13th. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Which is like winter. You got to start buying wings now. Do you mm-hmm. have? Yeah. They're gonna be high. Like we gotta have wings. Um, do you? Do I'm gonna you? call uh, Rick Ross up. I'm probably gonna do thigh. Five stops. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, probably do thighs. Yeah, you got, you got, you got connections. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about wings. I, you know, I, some of these wing places. I've never been to Ross's wing place, so I ain't talking about uh-huh. that. But I've go to some wing places, and they wings be real, real little in. Yeah. Extra crunchy. <laughs> don't be no well, that's Wayne. That's better than meat. being real big, though, dog. That's better than that's better than yeah, being real big. You don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying well, they're not the chicken you. wings? Is that what you're saying? Chicken wings. They're another animal. Steroids. I don't want to be confused with eating chicken or pigeon. I yeah. kind of want to know. You want to know what it is. You know. All right, Junior. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll talk about uh, more sports. Former NFL coach uh, accuses the league of racial discrimination. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, so Steve, what is the problem with the NFL and not hiring black coaches? I'm sure you have some ideas on that. And this is a league that's dominated by black players. Of course, we all know that. Now, former Miami's Dolphin coach 
Brian Flores has filed a proposed class action lawsuit against the NFL and three of its teams alleging racial discrimination. In the documents filed on behalf of Flores in my Manhattan federal court, the former coach who was fired by the Dolphins despite a winning season, keep that in mind too, it was a winning season, contends that his interview with the Giants was nothing more than a move to satisfy the Rooney Rule, which now requires teams to interview at least two external minority candidates for all head coaching vacancies. Flores said that the league is racially segregated and the NFL is managed like a plantation. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm -hmm. I mean, he goes on to say stuff about the the owners sitting in their luxury suites on Sundays and the players uh, get have to take vicious hits and suffer debilitating injuries to their bodies and their brains while the owners make billions of dollars. Uh, uh, There's a lot. The, I know. Well, the NFL has a problem now mm-hmm. because it's a class action lawsuit. And it has to be addressed. You can't you can't just shoot us under the rug. The other problem is there may be some other people that's going to come out the woodwork and sign up for this. Uh, Brian Flores will never coach in the NFL again. Huh? But because huh? because of this because oh, he brought this up. No, no. Because of the law. Oh, come on, black ball and oh, lawsuit. No. Mm-hmm. Brother, this let me it? ask you a question. Have you seen Colin Kaepernick throw another pass no, in the NFL? No. Dog, once you go up against that shield, you're finished. Now they paid Colin, mm-hmm. and Flores gonna get he he gonna get paid, but it's gonna be some years though. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna wait until this ain't a major story anymore. But you know what, man? I should post my uh, comedy routine I wrote for NFL Honors because I wrote a huge joke about this. Because I decided two years ago to dress it with humor, and I cut a deal with the NFL on behalf of the black players. Yeah. And I was I was cutting deals with them, like, you know, just give us certain things, man, and we'll be willing to exchange it for y'all. Like, if you give us mm-hmm. one white place kicker and holder, because mm-hmm. you've never seen that in the NFL, we going to give y'all two cornerbacks. <laughs> and I wrote it as a joke, and the audience was dying laughing, but it was to address the seriousness of the issue that's in the NFL. It always has been an issue and always will continue to be. Now, these owners are all white men billionaires. We got that. Yeah, but I can't knock you for being that. I can't knock you for owning a franchise. I can't knock you for trying to run it as a business. The problem is your hiring practices doesn't represent your league. And we're the only, that's the only sport that doesn't represent the makeup of the league. If you look at basketball, basketball does a lot better job of hiring black head coaches and black coaches to fit anything. Hockey don't have that problem because, well, (laughs) hello. It it ain't but a few black hockey players. Hockey don't have that problem. Baseball has done a better job of hiring Mm -hmm. and representative on the field. The football has not done a good job. And the Rooney Rule, where you have to hire two minority candidates for every head coach job, has still not resulted in any more coaches being hired. As a matter of fact, since the Bruni rule is less. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna believe this guy will coach again. Him, I want to well, hope that he will coach again in the NFL. Oh, no. Come on, partner. We'll have more of uh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Carla is here with today's music news. What you got, Carla? Okay, guys. So, no coming plans for that. <laughs> Coming in hot. No plans for Valentine's Day just yet. Well, get ready. A versus battle is set. Anthony Hamilton versus 
Music Soul Child. Now, they will face off on Monday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. That's a night of R&B and romance. That's real nice. Mm -hmm. So it'll be in L.A. And, you know, as usual, you can see the versus battle on the gram, Triller, uh, YouTube, Facebook. What's up, Tommy? You raised your hand. What were you saying? I'm just... I kept it on the back side. Mm. Okay, you're going to pull out your phone and do that. Right, right. It's right. going to really be a hard one, even though my affinity is leaning towards Anthony Hamilton because of our relationship. Yeah, you know? y'all are cool. Yeah, but I love yeah. some music soul child. Yeah, they both but, got but some hits. But let me tell you something, man. Music soul child got some hits, man. Yes. Mm-hmm. He ain't nothing We're to be played forward. with. Yes. I, I know. Really, who I don't the- really be torn on verses. <laughs> <laughs> we know former you versus know, battle host. Except the one I was on. <laughs> <laughs> All good. We'll be watching the uh, R&B singers, Anthony Hamilton, Music Soul Child on February 14th, Valentine's Day. And more announcements for the Super Bowl performance, Mary Mary, along with the Youth Orchestra Los Angeles. They will perform the Negro National Anthem at the Super Bowl, Lift Every Voice. Okay. Yep, so we got more coming. Thank you, Carla. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at, at 33 minutes after, and we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it's time for a round of Would You Rather. Would hey, You Shirley. Rather. Huh? Shirley, before yeah. you do it, just yes, on this Steve. first one. Uh-huh. A or B. We have to randomly pick A okay. or B and okay. then explain why that's our answer. So, okay. Tommy, you want A or B on this one? I'll take B. Junior? A. And you, I'll take I'll take B also. Okay. No, I Will better take A. Let me, no, no, let me get over here and help Junior. Let me, let me take A also. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Shirley. All right. Would you rather be rich... Oh. But not skilled at all in the bedroom at all. Or B, would you rather be smaller in size and really know how to please your partner? What the hell? That fits perfectly. That fits perfectly, Tommy. That fits perfectly. Hey, hey. Mm. Yeah. Tommy, but you're a loser. That's, that's so not me. That's yeah. so Man. not me. Yeah, you pick hey. it. Hey. You'd rather be smaller you. in size. Mm. Really know how to please. Yeah. Well, you know you're what? Right. I want to please my mate, and I know what it takes to please my mate. And size is not everything. You know, it's not the it's not the size of the ship. You it's the who motion you of the ocean. You the women on the show? <laughs> no, who told you that? <laughs> See, to even make that comment, when you hear a man talking about size ain't everything. That's know. what a man says. Yeah. Y'all, All right, I ain't, picking, I ain't picking a head no more. Come on. Yeah. I like all it. Right, you can go. make them do it for all of us. All right, next one, Shirley. All right, the next one. I just wanted to try that. All right, would you rather eat sweet potato pumpkin pie or a pickled pig ear sandwich? White people's favorite, I, I, black people's I, I, favorite. I'm going. I, I'm going Match with eight. Just put it all together. We need some unity that. in the world. Potato, potato, potato pumpkin pie. Sweet potato pumpkin pie. What? What the hell are you thinking about, man? <laughs> Sweet potato or, pumpkin pie or what? Or a pickled pig ear sandwich. No, nah, I'm going to go, go and eat that uh, sweet potato pumpkin pie. Yeah. It was I done had that po-ass it. dish before you talk. Yeah, well, I've had a pig ear sandwich before. Whew. Good yeah. Lord, Jesus. With some crackers. With some crackers. And it's put crackers. a hair off of it. What was we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what was we thinking? Man, it's all we just had. Go <laughs> sit up and eat this damn slave-ass sandwich. Oh, man. All right. All right. That's it for Would You Rather today. Coming up Aww. next, it is our, yeah, yeah, it's our last break of the day. And uh, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys, our last break of the day on this Thursday. It's been a good day. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. It's been a real good day. Learned a lot, a lot shared a lot, yes. laughed yeah. a little bit, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, it's kind of funny, man, as I've gotten older, you know, uh, somebody works for me was saying, man, you keep talking about this 65th birthday. What's up with that? 
And I was just, because I'm just so appreciative of the milestone, you know, because it's just like, I, I, it's not like I didn't see it coming or I didn't believe I'd get here. It's just that I remember being younger, thinking 65 was, I, I couldn't even imagine it. I couldn't even think about it because it just seemed so far. I was 20. I was thinking 65. What, what are we talking about that for? But, but you know what? It got here. Do you know when I was 40, man, I was giving very little thought to being 65. But you know what? It got here. I was 50. I really hadn't given too much thought to being 65. But it got here. Y'all, you got to start making decisions today based on the fact that it's coming. That it's going to get here. You know what? Too many people do. Too many, too many people make right now decisions based on today. Like there's no future at all. But listen to me. There's a strong possibility that it'll get here. And so even though we're not to worry ourselves about the future, you do have to give credence to the fact that one day it could get here. And so you can't make decisions based on just right now today on the other hand let me say this about that what makes it hard for people to become successful is because they understand and they allow this to come into play i can't see myself all the way through you have an ambition to be a millionaire you just can't imagine how to make the million and so that daunting task freezes most people from doing the one action they could do, which is take the step today. But if you're trying to see your way all the way through, it freezes you because you don't know how to get all the way through. There's a story in this book, uh, The Fox, The Hound, The Horse, The Son, The Boy, something like that. Anyway, this boy and his horse is walking through the woods, and the boy says, I can't see my I can't see all the way through, you know, because they had to walk through this forest. And the boy told the horse, I can't see all the way through. The horse said to the boy, look down. Can you see your next step? He said, yeah. He said, take that one. Just take that one. That's what I've learned in my life, y'all, that even though I didn't really see 65, I would always take the step to at least just get to tomorrow. I couldn't see myself all the way through. I, I'm going to be honest with you. The life that God has graced me with, I, I did not see this coming. Not fully. I wanted some things along the way, but there's no way I saw this. He's just been too good to me. He's been overly good to me. I, 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 that's how I know it's grace. Because really, man, if you think about it, You know, stop thinking you deserve something all the time because you really don't, because you deserved it. If we all got what we deserved, we'd all be in trouble. All of us, all of you. I don't care how righteous you think you are on how saved you claimed you are, how Holy Ghost filled all this here. If we all got what we deserved, all of us would be in trouble. Because think back on some of the decisions that we made that could have really, really went the other way. And God just through his grace and mercy and favor just didn't let it go as far left as it could. Mm -hmm. He just gave you a break. So stop thinking that you deserve all that you have because you don't. I've lived a life I've tried to work out, eat healthy and everything. But me getting to 65 was God's grace. And you know how I know it was? Because I know some real healthy people that ain't here no more. I know some people who could run faster than me, jump higher than me, were stronger than me in the gym and everything. And they not here no more. I know some men who were in far better shape than I am today. And they're not here anymore. Do I deserve to be here? Uh, Not based on everything I've done. But through God's grace and mercy and favor, I'm here. 
So I'm saying about three different things in this closing remark, so let me sum it up for you. Stop trying to see your way all the way through and just take the next step. And every time you take a step, pray to God and ask God for guidance, wisdom, and understanding, and that'll help you make the next step. Stop thinking that you deserve everything because you don't. Because if all of us got what we truly deserved, I think we all, if you were honest, we could. I did some things when I was young, man, that have I, if I had got caught doing it, I wouldn't be here today. I made some decisions when I was young that if I paid the full price for it, ah, my life would be another way. If you didn't like this one, see you tomorrow, I'll have another one. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you today. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 